nose to tail. Battle for the lead at day, or Darlington is in turn number one. All night long, Martin Truex Jr. has been the best long run car in the house, and he is chopping away at the margin now as they race toward three. Truex gets a great run into turn number three. He'll shut it down to about three car lengths. Elliott rides the high lane. Truex uses the lead downstairs. We'll resume this battle for the race, race lead in just a moment. Now let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Motor Racing Network. Motor Racing Network is live at the Darlington Raceway for the Cookout Southern 500. This, the 71st renewal of this great speed classic. Alongside NASCAR Hall of Famer Rusty Wallace and Jeff Striegel, I'm Alex Hayden, Dave Moody, Mike Bagley, they're out in the turns. Winston Kelly and Kim Kuhn are covering everything on pit road. 18 laps to go. Next time by, the top two have pulled away from Kevin Harvick. The top two, Chase Elliott in the Chevrolet, Martin Truex Jr. in the Toyota. Truex has led 194 laps, Elliott 111. I don't think they care about that. All they care about is leading the last lap here at Darlington, Dave Moody. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Martin Truex Jr. hasn't finished out of the top five in a couple of months but he hasn't been to victory lane either. He wants to change that here tonight. Here they come into turn number one. They'll go around the lap machine of Ross Chastain. What was about a three car length deficit, still about a three car length deficit as Truex tries to chase down Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott's running for his life right now because as he looks in the rear view mirror, Rusty Wallace brought up a great point. It stabilized at about two to three car lengths. They're using different lines, but Chase, at least for now, has the advantage. Now it's down to one car length. Here's Martin Trex Jr. right on the back bumper of the race leader. The battle for the lead at Darlington's in turn one. Into the low lane comes Chase Elliott. Now he'll slide all the way up to the outside lane. He takes it about a groove off the wall. He pulls away from Truex by about a car length. He'll grab another car length on the back straightaway. A little insurance there for Chase Elliott through three and four. Truex is flawless. Elliott low lane this time through. Here comes Truex, high line, exit all four. Here they come now, racing back to the line. Separation, a half a car length. Truex looking low this time. Mark, side Truex. Martin Truex Jr. dials the bottom. Slide job across the nose. They're both in the fence. Heavy hits for both Truex and Elliott. Can they keep going? They are still rolling down the back straightaway, trying to come up to speed after walloping the wall in turn two. Truex is the new leader. Elliott is with him. Both cars have right side damage, and Truex is starting to pull away. Off turn number four, Truex's lead over Chase Elliott now grows to about 10 car lengths. We've just got 15, now make it 14 laps to go. Back at Darlington, things are changing and changing rapidly. Martin Truex Jr., the race leader, is on pit road. And originally the spotter told him it looks good, there's no smoke. Then a lap later, Martin Truex Jr. came on the radio and said, I have a right rear going down. Crew Chief James Small said, bring it to us. Four tires, so no, no smoke or fuel, but they did have to pull out the right rear fender of that race car after Martin Truex Jr. got the wall. They're going to check the right front fender, too, as well. That's Martin Truex Jr. down in the way. And Chase Elliott is not the race leader. He was bypassed by Kevin Harvick. It's Harvick now out front. Austin Dillon has come to second as Chase Elliott now begins to fade with only 10 laps to go. From Darlington Raceway, this is the Motor Racing Network, the voice of NASCAR.
eight to go in the Southern 500. You thought it was going to be Truex, didn't you? And if you didn't, you probably thought it would be Chase Elliott. But wrong again. Harvick leads, but Austin Dillon is there. Austin Dillon is closing on Kevin Harvick. It's not dramatic, but it is a little bit at a time here. The Harvick lead is about 10 car lengths headed for three. Leaders are in lap traffic. Here's Harvick at the entrance of three. He's already put a lap on the Josh Balicki car. You got J.J. Yaley, Daniel Suarez directly ahead as well. J.J. Yaley's car painted up like Kenny Irwin Jr.'s old Nerf car. He'll pull that machine to the inside of the racetrack. Kevin Harvick will try to put a lap on him in turn one. He will do so going into turn one. Next man to go another lap down will be the Daniel Suarez machine here comes uh, Austin Dillon he has closed it up to about seven car lengths now now with the Suarez car in between the two so you've got Harvick you got Suarez and now you've got Austin Dillon who will squeeze to the inside of the Suarez car battle for the lead now separated by five car lengths with six to go do you want the four car or do you don't want the three car do you want the Ford or the Chevrolet it's Harvick leading Austin Dillon trying to lock themselves out into the round of 12. Kevin Harvick around the outside lane, right up next to the wall. Dillon running about a car whip lower. Off turn two, Harvick will leg it out. He'll grab a car length, maybe two, maybe three, as Harvick here in the last lap, perhaps maybe saving the best for last and starting to pull away from Austin Dillon. Five laps to go, Austin Dillon. Well, he can't get too comfortable in second. Joey Logano is there in third. He's trying to close in and run down the second place car. Now, right now, I think Austin Dillon is equally concentrating on the rear view mirror and the pursuit of Kevin Harvick, although the pursuit is not working. He has fallen back now. That lead is up to about 13 car lengths. Harvick is hitting his stride, and he is hitting it perfectly right now. He is putting car lengths between himself and Austin Dillon with every passing lap. Dillon trying to do everything he can to shut it down, but he can't. Earning the nickname, the closer, Kevin Harvick. Last time by, he was the quickest car on the racetrack as he slowly begins to pull away from Austin Dillon. Uh, he's got all the real estate he needs right now. All he needs to do is hit his marks, run his line, manage the lap traffic, and Kevin Harvick has got him right where he wants them right now. He's by himself, at least for now, but he does have Brandon Poole on the horizon. He does have Matt Benedetto on the horizon, but Harvick has free reign of any lane that he wants right now. With three laps to go, you might wonder where Chase Elliott is. He's still on the track. He's fallen back to 16th position. Harvick is back to the corner. That late race incident, a disaster for Elliott, a disaster for Truett, and an absolute gold mine for Kevin Harvick as he works off turn number two. Couple of lap cars may come into play in the next lap. He, you'll, he will use the inside line out of two and float the car up against the Boeing backstretch wall. He brings it back to three, nowhere near the wall. He's all the way at the bottom of the racetrack. Austin Dillon, only 10 car lengths back and only just over two and a half miles to go. Harvick across the line. Austin Dillon not letting him get away. Well, Dillon's going to try and track him down, try and make it interesting, but it's going to take a major mistake by Kevin Harvick at this juncture. There are a couple of lap cars that he's going to have to deal with. Brennan Poole, the first of those lap cars. He and DiBenedetto are in single file formation. Now they flare out double wide with Harvick dialing up the low lane here through three and four. Off turn number four, Kevin Harvick will look to the flag stand. He'll see the white flag go in the air. One more lap in the cookout Southern 500 for Kevin Harvick. Moves to the outside, puts a lap on the machine that, of uh, Matt Benedetto, who gives way to the bottom of the racetrack. Dylan has closed it up to about five or six car lengths, but it's not enough as Harvick has the lead on the backstretch. Here he comes for the final time at the Boeing backstretch. Austin Dillon is closing. It's down to four, now to three car lengths. Does he have enough time? Here he comes around the outside. One more shot for Dillon. Boy, Harvick appears to be somewhat off the pace, and Austin Dillon is there. Here they come, racing back to the checkered flag, and Kevin Harvick is going to get there first. Oh, but a matter of inches over Austin Dillon. I'm not sure that he did not have a tire going down, but Harvick has won the Southern 500. As Kevin Harvick came past the start finish line at the checkered flag, there were flames coming out of the header pipes, Rusty Wallace. A close call for the race winner, Kevin Harvick. Oh, Harvick really stalled out on the exit of turn four, right between the center of three and four and the exit. Something went awry with the number four car, but he made it to the start finish line and he's won this race. 
All right, Rusty, we'll follow up. Man, you're going to hear from Kevin Harvick. You're going to hear from Austin Dillon. The fireworks are going off just outside of turn number three. Kevin Harvick is celebrating his victory tonight. Well-earned indeed. Sunoco, the official fuel of NASCAR. Sunoco, fueling victories all season long.